My road to join the Air Force was actually a pretty long time because I was working multiple jobs as a civilian and I just wasn't feeling like I was getting the responsibility that I deserved. About a year after being out of uh, high school, I went to a recruiter and I spoke to him. We got the ball rolling that way just because I didn't feel like there was a clear path of a career where I was before. And in the military, it's like very, structured. like structured. Yeah. It's structured. Like you can see exactly where you're going to be in a few months, years, etc. Right. I wanted a career. Yeah. Career progression. Well, that and like finances, like not necessarily that I wasn't doing well, but because uh, with the military, I can structure out. Like I was telling you, like when we hung out the other day, mm -hmm. that um, with the TSP and like uh, all that stuff, like I can set it up so that way I can retire at 40. Even finances are more yeah, structured. Yeah, it's so much structure. Yeah. yeah. So I've been in for two years. Uh, I'm an A1C. That's E3. And I'm loving it so far. How much longer until you put on senior airman? March 2020. Almost another year from now. Yeah. I'm aerospace ground equipment, or we just like to call it age for short. And the AFSC is 2 Alpha 6X2. I signed an open mechanical and they were trying to push me to do four years, but I knew me as a person, I would want to do six years because I knew that there was gonna be parts of any job that you work for, like even civilian wise, that you're gonna hate and or dislike. And so I realized that for me, if I were to do six years, it would force me to kind of go along and see commit what, yeah, commit it and see what it's like. Um, so yeah, I did six years, open mechanical, and then as I was signing my contract, he said, oh, congratulations, sir. Um, you get E3 right out of tech school, and I was like, I didn't even know that. Okay. So you and then he's like, six without Yeah, that? yeah. And then he's like, uh, Oh, and you get a $2,500 bo uh, bonus. Yeah. Holy crap, I get all this money. I mean, it didn't end up being that. <laughs> it didn't end up being a lot of money, but yeah. like, it Not was still something. Yeah, it was like $1,800. Yeah. Got me home for a, for a visit with my family, so. I don't remember everything. Where was age then on that list? I'm pretty sure it was last. It was last? I'm pretty sure it was last. Dang. Yeah, I was like, because I remember getting called into the, the TI's office, and he's like, congratulations, you got aerospace ground up him, and I was like, did I even put that? <laughs> but like, like, it sounds kind of Yeah, cool. I was like, oh, it's like, I think that's what, like, and then I'm looking back, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's why I put it in there. But um, I had ammo, I had a bunch of crew chief jobs, which I'm glad I didn't get. <laughs> because being age, you know, we have a rivalry with uh, with crew chiefs, mm -hmm. as I'm sure you know. Um, but it's all out of love. But uh, like, so it was all crew chief jobs for like F-16s and stuff like that. But the cool thing about my job is that like, I'm not limited to an airframe. Yeah. So like, I can go to any base. Yeah, because crew chiefs get shredded out. Yeah. Like even airframe. people that I work with over at Beal, they're coded to the U-2 and um, the A-10. Because mm -hmm. apparently, like, I didn't even so know that. So they only get to go to, like, five bases. Yeah, there's, like, Korea, some places, you know, overseas, and Beale. Yeah. Like, that's it. So tech school is at Shepherd in Wichita Falls, Texas. So tech school was, like, about five months, I believe, or so. You know, it's been a while since I've been in, mm -hmm. but um, it was five to six months. So it was right on the cusp of like, I, I know, you, I know, I'm sure you know that um, you got BTP and then like you got ATP. With age, we were right on the cusp of like being, being able to uh, move out of the dorms, like the regular dorms for, uh, for training and go into the ATP dorms where like we can don't have to do uh, formation. We can drive a car to, to, to class and stuff like that. We were there, like we, we missed about like a month or something like that from yeah. what I was told, yeah. That, that kind of sucked. But I mean, at the same time, you're only there for a few months. Even if you only got a week of it, it would have been like, yeah. disappointing. Yeah, it would have been pretty cool, but yeah. you know. I enjoyed it. I did feel like it wasn't as in depth as it needed to be, mm -hmm. but I like mean, overly generalized well, almost. yeah, and you kind of need that to, ha to be like that because not everybody's going to have a mechanical background. I mean, yeah. I didn't really have a mechanical background Me either. either. I was guilty of that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I mean, I did um, a lot of Autodesk Inventor stuff. I don't know if you know what that is. Mm -hmm. So it's like 3D printing, um, 3D modeling and designing on the computer. Um, so I am actually certified in Autodesk Inventor, which is a program for that. That's awesome. For the Air Force. And so like that kind of stuff helps you think in a certain way mm -hmm. so 
I was very, I'm a very, very visual learner. Seeing everything on, on the board, touching the equipment, looking at all the wiring, that really helped me. Mm -hmm. And I did pretty well in, in tech school. I, I think the only block or class that I struggled in was hydraulics. Like I, you need like a 70 to pass. I got a 70 on hydraulic, but everything else was like 80s, 90s, 100s, 80s, 90s, 100s, and then 70. And I was like, so what was so difficult about hydro then? Well, it was a combination of like the, the teacher that was doing it didn't really link up with my um, learning style. Gotcha. It was kind of just like, oh, read off the board. And I, for me, I need somebody to say it and I need to or see like, it. Do it or something. Yeah, yeah. And then, then it locks in my brain forever. But like, it was a combination of that and like it was getting towards the end i was getting burnt out i was tired yeah, senioritis of this. yeah yeah <laughs> i was like i don't want to do this anymore yeah. and i was like well, i'm gonna pass i'm just ready anyway. to get to my base yeah, yeah yeah exactly i'm just fine i'm ready to find out what my base is yeah and uh because I, I still don't think i knew at that point yeah we, um, we found out like two weeks before yeah it, it depends in tech school some well, people will find out like right away yeah. and other classes will find out like, yeah. right before they leave so. and I, the thing is they told me like oh you're going to beal and the teacher that i had loved to mess with us he'd be like oh yeah you got fighters uh, at beal and i was like oh, okay i looked it up i'm like no we don't like, it's all reconnaissance what the heck <laughs> like why would you lie to me so they're just messing around oh yeah they do that they would tell us like um well one of you guys are osi and we'd be like oh my god we always used to think yeah that basic training and texting yeah somebody hears osi we used to think yeah. there was like microphones hidden in the ac vents in the doors yeah yeah and there's nothing yeah like, there's it, nothing oh, i, I yeah. spoke to an osi agent at one point uh, not for me or anything like that, but uh, it was like a mass briefing, like for uh, getting ready to deploy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, I'm sure you heard about, you know, us doing this, this, and this, uh, and basic training in tech school. He's like, we don't do that. I'm like, yeah. Isn't that something somebody would say if they did? <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly don't think that they do though. I don't. I'm out now, but I, like, it's just like people are paranoid. Yeah, exactly. And so it's just like, as long as you do the right thing, you're going to be fine. Yeah, so, that's, I mean, that's yeah. that's what I try to do. Yeah. <laughs> Integrity first. Yeah, right? <laughs> you got to. Yeah. So was there anything else about tech school like that stood out to you that you loved about being a shepherd specifically? Because I've heard some people hate it, some people well, love it. And it's like, it's like any PCS, you know, it is what you make of it. Mm -hmm. Shepherd was really small, at least what we were allowed to like see yeah. and everything like that. Um, it wasn't a bad experience because like you had the mall, you had this one place that we used to go all the time. It was a, a hibachi place. I can't remember the name. Yeah. So like every weekend people yeah, go, we would, we'd go there and like I wasn't 21 yet, so I couldn't drink or anything, yeah. but like I would always, you know, DD for everybody yeah. or we'd take like the van shuttle. You start getting paid to DD people? No. Oh, you no, know, so you start man. hustling, you start making money. <laughs> cool. Yeah. There would be guys that drive people around all the time because... If you didn't have a DD, you'd have yeah. to hire a taxi. A taxi or... So, like, you can't even get on base with that. So, some people would be like, if you pay me 15 bucks, I'll take all you guys. Yeah. So, we were like, okay. And then they were making, like, they'd go pick people up and then bring people back. And they were making <laughs> money all weekend. Well, I didn't have a car in tech school. So, like, I, yeah. I was using, like, Other their cars, cars. And, like, um, this one girl, uh, she had a car that her, you know, dad brought down. And we'd always go out, like, our whole class. And we'd go out to eat and stuff like that. So, like, I was like, well... I'm not 21. I'm like one of the only people who's not. So I'll just do yeah, it. And you know, I've been sacrifice. I've been DDing for for two years in the military. And now that I turned 21, I'm like it's my time to shine. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you enjoyed tech school overall. Like, yeah, you it, was, it was a good it was, experience. It was a good experience. Yeah, I mean you got to share a room with people, and I mean after basic, it's not really anything different. You know, it's yeah, just you were it's actually a room with one people, per yeah. one person now in tech school, <laughs> and it, it was like it was a good experience. It was nice. I'm like I don't know that as soon as I got to tech school, um, I got to my my dorm and I instantly started talking to my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife. Like we were just like, I was just like, oh my God, now I can talk to you all the time. And she's <laughs> like, phone yeah. <laughs> nobody can tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, they're like, well, no phones in class. And I was like, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's pretty standard. Yeah, because uh, my, job, my job is the same way. Tech school, we weren't yeah. allowed to have phones, so. Yeah. Everybody just pretty much after school is when you would talk to somebody. Yeah, I mean, we had, uh, we had in our sister class, we had a cross trainer from avionics, I guess with the AWACS. He was a senior airman and it was like, he's got, he gets to have his phone in here cause you know, he's prior service. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that must be really he's nice. he's not in like the train. Yeah. Phase. I was like, that must yeah. be really nice to cross train. Yeah. And then my supervisor now is actually a uh, cross trained from avionics to age. I don't know where he was before, but he, he's a hard worker. You know, yeah. he, he works, he, he outworks a lot of people in our shop. Uh, as far as I know, I mean, I don't, 
I know there's a lot of, you know, yeah. bases around the you world. You only know what you've experienced. Yeah, much, yeah. But. So, like, you can go pretty much anywhere. Like, if there's aircraft there, If there's aircraft sure. there, for sure. Unless, I don't think we can come to Nellis because it's contracted. No, the rescue unit is not, though. Okay. So, they do have a small age shop. Okay, I didn't rescue. know that. Same with my job. My job's contracted on all the fighters, mm -hmm. but the helicopters, we still run the oh, age okay. unit. There's only, like, 12 people in the age shop. Okay, yeah. Know, like well, because, like, at Beale... Metals Tech is contracted completely, mm -hmm. but we just now started getting um, military yeah. working there. So it's, it's, it's yeah, 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 as long as there's active duty uh, components slots or slots yeah. available at the base, we can go there. Okay. So you pretty much, yeah, free to go anywhere. So mm -hmm. if you want to want the opportunity to maybe go somewhere or not well, be, because well, if you would have been a crew chief, you would have been yep. limited to like five bases, yep. whatever that airframe is stationed at. And what a lot of people do is they'll put in orders for Korea and then they'll um, have a follow on to where they want to go. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're still considered a first term airman. Yeah. You have a better chance of going to a base you might want yeah. to go to. Exactly. So sacrifice one year in Korea. Are you yeah. thinking about doing that? Well, I'm thinking about it, but since I'm married, I'd take my wife. It'd have to be three years. Yeah. So I asked my wife, I was like, hey, would you go with me to Korea? And she's like, Sure. And I was like, all right, cool, bet. <laughs> like, I'll put it on my list. <laughs> yeah. If it happens, it happens. Exactly. Let's I mean, with the rate that people are disappearing from our shop, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It'll happen. The best way I describe it to civilians is we're diesel mechanics. And so, like, we work on big generators that put out a lot of AC power and some that put out DC power because they are different mm -hmm. uh, power sources. The uh, Dash 60, basically what those things do is they provide bleed air to the aircraft. We, on an average day, we're gonna like, we're gonna do inspections on the, on the equipment. So we phase one inspections, phase two inspections, and those are just basically oil, you know, checking to make sure the gas isn't, or the diesel isn't uh, contaminated. You know, checking belts and electronic components, all that kind of stuff. You're just basically making sure that there's nothing out of the ordinary and each piece of equipment is gonna have like special requirements. Like with for the 86, for example, uh, which is just a big generator that we use that's very common for every aircraft. Plug it into the aircraft. You have to make sure that the bolts on the generator are torqued down correctly. So like that's like a, a specific thing that we would do. So that'd be included in your inspection? Yeah, in, in, in the, the inspection. Equipment. I guess, yeah, anything that we would have in our shop mm -hmm. is gonna be uh, specifically for supporting uh, aircraft in their sorties, which is, you know, their flying times. On an average day, we're gonna do the inspections for that, uh, for that support equipment. And then you're also gonna have an age driver that his sole, or he or she's sole purpose on the flight line is to get a call, deliver age. Get a call, deliver age. And you're like Grubhub. Yeah, we're like <laughs> we're like Uber Eats for, yeah. for the flight line. <laughs> yeah. But you're not delivering food, you're delivering yeah. equipment. He's like he's like, hey man, we need we need a juicy lox cart right here. And I'm like, alright, 15 mic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we will we'll pick up equipment, whatever they need to support that aircraft, whether it's recovery or launch. Uh, because recovery, you need equipment. Doesn't matter what you're doing with an aircraft, you're gonna need age. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of SOL if you don't have age. Yeah, I'd say it's a thank. It's a thankless job. So sometimes. So yeah, like the the common things that you can get put into an age are um, you can either drive the line, and normally at least at Beale, we'll do it for about a month at a time, uh, depending on what if you're on day shift or or night shift. Um, so you got, you know, the dispatcher, which is just driving to and from the flight line, bringing equipment. And then you have spuds, which is basically your sole purpose is to bring equipment that needs to be fixed. And we bring it to sheet metal or to or a metal tech, whichever yeah. one is going to be able to fix that, that piece of equipment. And normally yeah, it is You guys would always tech. bring like generators to us that had bolts that were broken out or oh, something right. or like rivets would be like loosened oh, on them. Fill and, and drill. And we'd have to reshoot. Yep. Rivets into it. Yep. So. so you'll do spuds, which is, I don't know, I'm sure it's very different between like Bases. every base, but mm -hmm. the base that I'm at will have spuds. Um, and we have an inspections lead, which you have to get a certain amount of inspections done. So you could be put in inspections or you could be put in maintenance where you're basically just sitting there 
and you'll fix whatever major thing happens. So you or troubleshoot. You troubleshoot. You're, you're troubleshooting. What is wrong with it. You're figuring out what's wrong with stuff. You're fixing the stuff. You're ordering parts. You're putting parts in. Because a lot of times, um, is it just like one or two parts that go bad, like a like a switch or something that breaks? It's or? it's it's usually very minimal. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I first came in, I was like, oh, the generator's bad. I, it's got to be. And my seven level's like, no, you should you should keep troubleshooting because you already knew it was wrong. Yeah. And uh, that's how I got. It's like we're not buying a new yeah, generator. Yeah. That's how I got good and then at it. Ended up being like a hundred dollar part, and you were like, I wanted to replace the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of like you know fifty thousand dollars. But it's then, almost like working on a car. Like when your yeah. car stops working, you're not like the whole motor's bad. Yeah, you gotta. You're you like, gotta, oh, it's something. You like, gotta break you know, it down. O2 sensor's bad. Yeah. And then you like replace O2 sensor, and then yep. you're like. Oh, it works now. Yeah. And then you can also have uh, support inside the, the aid shop. Okay. So support is basically going to be, hey, you know, I need, it's like a tools crib. Yeah. Yeah. You need a. Uh, they just are in charge of the tools, the tools. And like, usually they're in charge of the programs of the, of the shop. Like, um, I know I just got put on fall prevention. And so I got to make that from scratch because I. Update I've never I've never made a program before, but yeah. it's gonna be the first time. But yeah, so like they'll do a lot of programs like has and stuff like You're that. Like, step one, don't fall. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> step one, don't fall. But you have to have like a whole pro, like a whole book, like yeah. a binder on fall prevention. Yeah, exactly. So you got to create a whole binder now. Yeah, well, I mean, luckily it's with my supervisor, so he's yeah. gonna show you know, you how. he's gonna show me how to do it, so I know in the future. Yeah. So that's at least good. Get your license. Get your license. Get Before your license. you join. Before you join, get your license. You know, no one's gonna fault you for fault you for living in an area where you, you know, like New York, where you're not gonna have your license normally. But if you get in and you don't have your license, make the effort to try to get your license as soon as you can, because it just puts more work on your coworkers to have to bring you to and from work. And like, that's not that big of a deal. But the fact that you can't drive the flight line, that's like 50% of your job is driving the line. So if you can't do 50% of your job, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah. You're like, you're I, know, I knew somebody <laughs> who didn't get her license for a while and she was put on 12s yeah, until for she went like and got it. a month and a half or something like that. So she yeah. got it. And because it, you're, yeah. you're impeding the shop at that point by exactly. not. And so they, they will put you on a mandatory duty exactly. to make sure that you get your stuff done. Because mm -hmm. that's a requirement is yeah. have a license that's up well, to date. That's the, the weird thing is, is that it's not a requirement for age. You can get it age without having a license. Or if it's just a requirement once for you're the, there. Yeah, once you're there. Yeah. Which is like, I think that's wild to me. Like why we wouldn't say, hey, 50% of this job is, is you need a license. So, so recruiters should not yeah, have this job unless yeah. the person has a license. But I mean, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, getting people in and like they'll eventually yeah. get their license. So it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But um, on top of making sure you have your license, I would say make sure you're willing to learn with any job that you get in the military. You just need to make sure that you want to learn because if you're not going to like put in the effort to learn your job, mm -hmm. you're not going to promote, you're not going to do, you're not, you're not going to go on the cool TDYs. Like if I didn't work hard, I would not be on this TDY here, Yeah. you know? And so just work hard, even if you don't know what you're doing, just best foot forward, you know, and you're going to, you're going to have a good time. Awesome. All right, guys, that was my interview with Austin. I appreciate you, for one, uh, coming here. Two, thank your base for sending you TDY here so you were able to do this interview. Um, it's, isn't this crazy what, what it looks like from somebody that's in to somebody that's not in? Like, <laughs> I haven't looks, shaved in like It looks days. so funny when I'm next to somebody else that's like <laughs> in regs and then like me, I was like, I, I look like this seven months ago. That's, that's what's crazy. crazy. I mean, <laughs> and like the thing is, before I joined, I didn't have like a crazy beer or anything, but like I had a nice goatee going mm -hmm. on and I miss it so much. Yeah, that's what I was, oh, this, I never had this before yeah. I joined, but now I do. I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm going to definitely have to do that when I get out. But, yeah, mo uh, most people do when they get out. So. <laughs> we'll see though. But I actually had longer hair um, in middle school. I grew it out. I grew it out to like right here. That's my goals. That's what yeah. I'm trying to get to right it's, now. It's a lot of work though, you know, yeah. and you learn how to do the whole like towel thing. Yeah, that's, I'm... <laughs> I'm like, once I get there, I'll probably be like, all right, I'm getting rid of it now. So I yeah. just want to grow it out once. But yeah, yeah, thanks for coming here and talking. You were super comfortable on camera, which is really cool because a lot of people are kind of nervous, but he seemed really comfortable. You guys should comment down below anything that you learned about this, anything that you liked, or if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this, uh, comment them down below because there might be other age people that watch this video too, and they can kind of help out in the chat, uh, let you know the the real things or whatever that you're seeking answers for that we maybe didn't I definitely don't know everything in here. my yeah. job you know I've only been in for two years so I got a lot to learn yeah and it, it's always a learning process nobody knows it all so yeah. and every base is going to be different all right guys that was everything for the video be sure to leave a comment down below click like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video peace out